If it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it can only mean one thing. Welcome to Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, everyone. Time to get into it. NBA action on 2K Sports. Tonight, we'll see the Utah Jams as they play against the Cleveland Cavaliers at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Joined in the booth with Greg Anthony and Brent Berry, this is Kevin Harlan, our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. And taking a broader look here at the year-over-year -year scoring trend for Kevin Love. And maybe it's shocking, or maybe, well, maybe not too shocking, but the scoring trend over the last few years has been going down a bit. And I'm sure it's something he's well aware of, and we'll see if that continues to be the case. And let's go straight over to David Aldridge for a report before the tip-off. Hey, Dave. Good evening to you, Kevin. Donovan Mitchell is precocious beyond his years. He says, I lead a lot using my voice. It's natural for me. And Coach Quinn Snyder said, the way Donovan carries himself is infectious. There's an innocence to the way he plays. He's not showboating. He's just smiling. He loves to compete. Guys? I love his personality. That was a great story, Dave. Thank you. A couple of great big men in the middle tonight, Greg. Center matchups are far from traditional these days, but this should be fun to watch. Especially, Kevin, once you get into the small ball lineups. I mean, we've seen guys as short as P.J. Tucker play the five. The starters for the Utah Jazz. Mitchell and Engel serve as the wingmen. Rudy Gobert is out there with Rudy Gay. And it's Forrest in at the point guard. And for Cleveland... Mobley and Allen, the two big men inside. Main man is out there with Ricky Rubio, and it's a Coro in at the three, the small forward. So Cleveland will get the first possession. Here's Sullivan, lays it up and banks it in. And it's always nice to get the easy look inside for your first points of the game. Mr. Gobert. Here's Forrest. There's the dish to Mitchell. Puts up a three. Cranes it from beyond the arm. Mitchell. And when he's hitting from deep, Mitchell's practically unguardable. Can't crowd him out there. He, he'll just drive right around you. Allen against Gobert. Allen dishes to Okoro. Let's it go with a three. Gobert pulls it in. And so it's Ingles with it. He brings it up for Utah. And it's Mitchell missing. Rubio outside. Cleveland moving the ball around. Shoots the three. That's it. He's got two made now, and he's shooting two for three. The core of showing his ability to find an open teammate. Now, here's Mitchell. Defense right out of him. It's good for his second make. He's made two or three so far. Man, he's got that touch working tonight, shooting the ball very well to start this one. Here's the pass to Mobley. Kicks it to Okoro. From the arc, another three for Cleveland. Okoro trying to get more and more consistency with that shot. Here's Forrest. Mitchell outside. Five on the clock. Again, Mitchell missing. So for the Jazz, their last game of loss to Boston. And they call him Spider because of that long wingspan. 6'10 at present. But standing 6'1, Mitchell needs that to compete defensively at that shooting guard position. That's the kind of passing you want there. Work the ball around. Keep it moving. Try to get an assist on every bucket. First quarter of ball, almost two and a half minutes in. Ingles passes to Forrest. Utah needs to get off a shot here. Game. Allen with the rebound. And we know what Mitchell can do offensively. But, Greg, how do you evaluate his defensive game? And, Kevin, without question, there's room for improvement. I'd say he's probably below average, but he has the tools that if he tightens up that part of his game, look out. Here's Forrest. Jared Allen making his last shot. Now 
here's Mobley. He's covered by Gay to the paint. And Mobley, the bucket on the assist from Okoro. The ball movement on this run has been fantastic and is a big part of why they've been able to get these good looks. Timeout is called first of the game for the Jams. And they just can't seem to get going offensively. Yeah, they're like a four-day-old soda right now, just flat. They're missing shots left and right, just not playing their best. For your powerhouse dance team. How's the season turning out for him? He's putting up about eight points a game, four assists, and two rebounds. And so much of what they do on offense depends on how he plays. Well, he attracts serious attention from the defense, and that really does open up the backside for a lot of his teammates to take full advantage. Now, here's Rubio, following the miss by Donovan Mitchell. Allen kicks to Rubio. Here's Sullivan. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. Rain Man's got a pair of threes now in the first quarter for the Cavs. Here's Forrest. Trying to get something going, and that's two points on the layup. Just setting the tone with an aggressive move to the rack, and, and where's the help? defensively. Yeah, APB sent out to try to find out where the defense is. Inexcusable. Here's Rain Man. He's got eight. And another three for Cleveland. That's too good a look to give them from behind the arc. Jazz trail by 14. Here's Forrest. Nine point game is last out. And he gets it to go. And their post play has been really solid right off the bat. It's Allen on the wing. Defended by Gobert. Tries a three. Rubio misses. Jazz have gone four for nine from the field to start this game off. Here's Forrest. Stats on him. He's averaging nine points a game. It's sent back by Allen. And how about, and with that great length and awareness, Allen continues to build his reputation as a shot blocker. A nice shot by Mobley. How many times have we seen a possession to take that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. Passes to Gobert. He kicks it to Mitchell. 13 feet away. It's rebounded by Cleveland. Things are going south right now. This is not the type of shooting that his teammates expect from him. Here's Sullivan. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. And that's now 11 points for Rain Man. And they are shooting the lights out from distance here early. And the Jazz call time here. They couldn't put the pieces together, losing that last matchup with Boston. Yeah, a snowball effect in that one. One thing would go wrong, but then another, then another, really the story of the game. Yeah, it felt like just the entire roster was stuck in neutral. There was nobody offensively that could get anything going. And a quick check now. The NBA's top rebound. Second, Jared Allen. And you can't win games without rebounding the basketball. That's what has made him such an important part of what they do. Tipped away, and it's stolen by Ricky Rubio. Pulls up. You can't get that one. Now the Jazz take it the other way. This game against Cleveland is the first time they've met this season. In the last season, they made short work of this club. Two games, two wins. Sort of representative of how they each finished the season. One a playoff team, the other on the outside looking in. I think things may play out the same way this year, too. Here's Forrest. Pass to Ingles. Ice ball movement by Utah. Gay, that's a two-pointer. Cavaliers with the rebound. 
Rain Man's got his fourth rebound in this one. Pass to Allen. That's tipped. Here's Forrest, defended by Allen. Mitchell passes to Forrest. Three-pointer. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Forrest has got seven. Shots are just flowing. Him right now having a really strong quarter. The pass to Sullivan. And he gets the friendly spin and that one drops. 13 points for Rain Man. Wow, unconscious has he been this quarter. They're riding that hot hand. Forrest passes to Mitchell. Gobert dishes to Mitchell. Hangs in midair and converts on the double clutch layup. Rudy Gobert. Nine points in the game so far. And there's an edge to Mitchell's game. He, he wants to be the guy in charge. And if that means he's got to get physical, he'll do it. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they shot the basketball. Here's Forrest. Jared Allen making his last shot. Forrest's shot is off. Cleveland leading by 14. Here's a Kuro, and a Kuro throws it down. The screen intensity right off the opening tip, especially on the offensive. Yeah, if you walked in at any point during this game to watch five minutes of play, one team played harder. You know who that was. And here's Mitchell from the arc, and the Jazz, another three. three four. And he's clearly led the way offensively. The question is, can they ride him and get back into it? Passes it to Sullivan. Rubio outside. Okoro dishes to Mobley. Pass to Allen. Six on the shot clock. Here's Rubio. Another three for Cleveland. And you can't help but pick their defense apart. They're completely in disarray. And Ricky Rubio gets the whistle that time. That is his first foul of the game. And the Cavaliers will go with a different look here. Love's checked in for Allen. Lowry Marketing comes in for Mobley. Sexton, he's checked in for Okoro. And it's Garland in for Ricky Rubio. And that was a great replay we just saw of our mobile one block. And this is how you protect and grow a lead by making a huge effort on that end of the floor. Right side, the pass to Mitchell. Butler feeling out of it. Five to shoot. O'Neal from long range. Love grabs the board. He's not the guy that you want to give a wide open look from three point range. They're lucky that that one doesn't cost them. Out to the wing. Inside. He feeds it to Markinen. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. And Love has a knack for recognizing when a teammate's going to break wide open. And so it's Mitchell who brings up the ball for Utah. They trail by 18. Takes the 13-footer. Yes, that goes in. Mitchell's got 14 points. Disappointing as a player to have such a great game and still be trailing. Not over yet, though. Sexton and the Cavaliers get another bucket right there. Sexton looking good from that spot on the floor. Last game for the Cavaliers, they picked up the W against the Wizards. Well, when you look at Sexton, he has the ability to play either guard spot, and I like that versatility. Well, especially in today's game, Kevin, I think smaller and smaller players are going to be able to get back during the regular season and impact the way that offenses come at you and play with pace. And Sexton, one of those guys who can slide over and be a, a bit of the one-two combo guard that you're talking about. And here is Butler. Following the three-pointer by Kevin Love. Mitchell's shot is good. Mitchell. And the coaching staff loves this. Mitchell being assertive on offense and just imposing his will. Right side, Markinen. Over Bogdanovich. And Markinen with the basket on the assist by Sexton. 
just playing with poise and confidence, and they continue to put points on the board. Yeah, just really pouring it on right now, trying to take away the opposition's motivation to keep competing in this one. Now, here's Whiteside. His last outing, we saw him pour in 22. Can't cash in on the 10 foot jump. Here's Sullivan. That one is good again. He sits right from the floor with the basket. And Matador defense, that's one of the easiest shots he is ever going to see. Yeah, feels like Christmas right now, just gift wrapping points. Butler against Garland. Outside Butler. Shoots over Garland. Butler, no good. Cleveland leading by 23. Garland, the pass to Love. And he converts the lane. Love's got five points so far. Excellent all-around performance so far. Hence the big lead. Well, if I was baking up a lead, I'd add two ingredients. One would be playing smart. The other one playing selfless. They've done that tonight. Serve it up. And so it's Cleveland holding a very comfortable 25-point lead as the quarter comes to a close. The three-point shooting has come fast and furious to the tune of what has become a big-time blowout in progress. And don't go away. We'll be right back. And the unselfishness of this Utah Jazz team a big part of what they're all about as we hear from all-star Donovan Mitchell. We got guys who are continuously making plays, you know, and I think we thrive off of, and I think the best part about it is we don't really care who it is. You know, I think that's what separates us from a lot of, a lot of teams, and that's what's going to hopefully get us to that next step. I think that's the best thing about this team. It doesn't matter who it is. We're going to go out there and continue to find the open man and play the right way. And Frank, the depth of the gym, obviously helping with that equal opportunity approach. And Kevin, that's a great point. You credit the mindset, but it's also their personnel that makes it possible. The assist, Donovan Mitchell. And glad to have you with us, folks. Second quarter of basketball. This game has not exactly been neck and neck, but plenty of time left in this one. And guys, let's get your take on the scoring breakdown for Cleveland. And so far, these guys have done a fantastic job finding the open man and getting some easy baskets. Well, it's also been a real solid start for them from behind the three-point line. That shot's been there so far. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade as the second quarter gets going. So on the floor for Utah. Mitchell in at the two with Bogdanovich at small forward. Eric Pascal out there with Whiteside, and it's Butler in at the one spot. And they've won the rebound battle so far, and it's translated to the scoreboard. Yeah, it's not just about stopping the offense and the scouting report. It's about knowing where to be when those shots are going to be missed. And they're doing a nice job on the rebound. Here's Mitchell following the basket by Colin Sexton. Oh, and the dunk Mitchell. by Mitchell. A dynamic leaper with an impressive wingspan. Mitchell usually has some flashy dunks up his sleeve. His shot was hindered by that momentous mobile one block. And, and guys, they'll think twice about attempting that shot again. That was a big-time rejection. Here's Sullivan. That's good, and it's Garland with the assist. With the assist. Garland's got three assists in the game. Utah's gone three of five from beyond the arc so far tonight. Garland against Butler. Stolen by Garland. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Thank you, Kevin. Well, the Utah Jazz last season was elite at both ends of the floor. Sixth man of the year winner Jordan Clarkson says, three things we've been doing well are playing fast, sharing the basketball, and defense. We're playing a fun style of basketball and just keep racking up the wins. Guys? They are fun to watch and a handful. D.A. thanks. And, and really keeping the ball hopping around here offensively. Pasco kicks to Mitchell. With the drive. And it's Mitchell with the jam. 
and footwork really so important. Donovan threads the drive there with such grace. And the pass to Sullivan. Here's Love, and again it's Cleveland. Man, fantastic Ooh. ball movement. They're picking them apart with their passing. For Utah, they've gone four of six in the field here in the second. To the middle. Here's Whiteside. Count the bucket That's coming off a perfectly side. placed assist. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Pass to Sullivan. Garland looking it over. Mark it in against Pascal. Shot clock at six. And it's Whiteside with the rebound. And you could tell he thought that triple was going to fall. Second chance shot, and Pascal lays it in. Pascal's got six in the quarter. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Sullivan, the pass to Markinen. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. That's his first personal foul. In your experience, Brent, in the front office, has it changed how you view the, the game in any way? I, I think, Kevin, it's a great question, and I'll actually take it beyond the game and talk about the NBA as a product. I think there's so much more respect that I have the levels to which organizations go to and through in order to put on an NBA season from what they do in promotions and ticket sales to the lengths they go to provide the players the best opportunity to maximize their potential. So from top to bottom, sort of being behind the curtain in that way, uh, it's allowed me to see some things on some levels that I appreciate so much more. And I'm so thankful for that opportunity. Cleveland moving it around. Darwin kicks to a car roll. Pass to Markinen. Allen trying to break free. And Markinen gets it to go on the assist from Okoro. Okoro's got four assists in the game. Now, here's Ingles. Coming in off a 21-point game, his last outing. Here's Mitchell. Takes it inside. Gobert down low. Defended by Allen. Here's Bogdanovich. Count it from 12. Oh, yeah, field goal percentage above 50 now. Their offense is starting to show. Sexton finds Allen. Outside Garland. Okoro with it. Fires from deep. Cracks in the tray. Okoro's got eight points. Sometimes it looks like for Garland, the game comes a bit easy, whether making plays for himself or others. Mitchell feeling it out a bit. Nice concentration to hit the double clutch layup. Mitchell's got 25 points. And of the last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is just smash mouth physical basketball, guys. And count up the shot is good. He'll go to the free throw line. And how about the focus from the native defender? It's clear that Markinen is used to playing through contact. And this is his second trip line, to the line of the game. Wow, Got to admire what he's been able to do at the free throw line this season. How about over 90%? And the Cavaliers making a change here. Rubio's checked in. One word you can use to describe Jared Allen, Greg, is efficient. He doesn't waste his chances at the offensive end. I mean, like ever. He's very smart with his shot selection. But don't let that take away from his defense. Allen takes a lot of pride in protecting the rim. Sexton realizing that one of his guys is wide open, and that court awareness, he was able to get it to him. It's rebounded by Cleveland. They defeated the Wizards in their last game. Well, you look at the points they produced in that game. Great adjustments on the offensive end. Yeah, never stopped working. One of those games where just everybody was making shots, continual flow, and a very professional win. Here's Forrest. Seven points in the game. Here's Mitchell. The Jazz with another miss. Yeah, and they've shown effort and aggression in the paint, really right from the tip. Their rebounding edge right now, massive. Marking in good. This looks like he's got more feel tonight. Like he's really got a good grip on that ball as he's letting it go. Gay passes to Mitchell. Yeah, 
pass to Gobert. Good, and it's Mitchell picking up the assist. And how about the play by Gobert there in the paint? Not afraid to get physical on his way to the basket. Okoro passes to Allen. Rubio outside and stolen by Gay. Ingles with the ball. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring hit from him. And the jam by Rudy Gay. That Rudy Gay up off the ground and dunking it down hard. Nice to see that. Rubio finds Sexton. Down low. Here's Allen. And the Cavaliers get another bucket right there. He didn't need to fade back. No one in his face, but he buried it anyway. Gay passes to Mitchell. On the wing, Ingles. To the inside. On the wing, Mitchell. Covered by Rubio. Now that's just enough defensive pressure on him to throw off that shot. I bet he gets a, a good look at it next time and hits it. Allen kicks to a Okoro. Kept alive with the second effort. And Allen with the yeah. layup. Allen's got eight points. And that's what happens when you get after it on the glass. Allen grinding it out and creating that second chance opportunity for himself. Now, here's Mitchell. He's got 25. Gay passes to Gobert. Kicks it out to Mitchell. And Rudy Gay picks up the foul. Rudy Gay. That's his first foul. That's good for Mitchell on the assist by Gobert. Mobley, he's checked in for Cleveland. And Utah with a change here, too. O'Neal's checked in for Donovan Mitchell. And so Allen will bring it up for the Cavaliers. Sexton finds Rubio. Right side, Sexton. That one goes. Counting. Six points for him. Too easy that time. Sexton sniffing it out and then getting to an area on the floor that made that one easy. The pass to Ingles. Over to the left wing. Jazz passing it around. Sexton against Gobert. Ingles kicks to Gobert. Over Sexton. Misses off the right iron. Cleveland's gone 2 of 4 from three-point range so far in the second quarter. Rubio misses. Utah has gone to three-point range seven times tonight. Knocked down five of them. Gay passes to Forrest. Passes it to Ingles. From past the arc, the shot comes out. And Cleveland the other way now. And here is Mobley. And they get some nice contributions from him on a nightly basis as he averages over 11 points a game. And with Allen's height and agility, he breezes through the contact, getting himself right to the finish. Here's Forrest. Jared Allen making his last shot. Driving in. Feeds it to Ingles. Pass to Forrest. And here's Gay. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Two minutes. He dishes it to Gobert. Back to Gay. Beyond the arc. Good on the three-point shot. Gay's got five now. Now this is Rudy Gay's game, outstanding at seizing the initiative and then looking to shoot once he catches the ball. Sexton the pass to Rubio. This is to Okoro. That's in, coming off an assist from Rubio. Rubio's got his fourth assist in this one. Gay kicks to Ingles. 112 left in the first half of basketball. Cleveland's gone three of five beyond the arc since the start of the second quarter. And Okoro throws it down. And you won't see it on Isaac Okoro's face. He plays pretty steady. He's asserting himself now. 59 seconds left to play in the first half. 
Forrest passes to Gay. Here's Forrest. Gay outside. And again, it's the Jazz yeah. from deep. And boy, has he picked it up since the start of the second. His shot's now starting to fall. Pass to Okoro. Now, here's Mobley. He's covered by Gay. From deep. And they recover it. Mobley kicks to Okoro. Allen outside. Back to Rubio. A three-pointer, no good. Ah, uh, you love basketball. Couldn't miss in the first quarter. Now can't make it in the second quarter. Gotta be eating at him just a bit. It's Allen on the win. Back to Sexton. He tries for three. Another shot. And Allen with the nice bucket inside. Allen. Allen's got eight points in the quarter. You really got to hit Allen if you want to stop him. Just so long and strong from there. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. Cleveland ahead, running away with it. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks, guys. With Quinn Snyder, coach, they came at you offensively. So what has to change for you defensively? Well, a lot, obviously, with everybody on the floor. Uh, you know, they're capable of doing this, but we're not. It's just too easy. Got to tighten things up as we go along. Thanks for your time. Back to you guys. Thank you, David. And we'll be right back after halftime to start the third quarter. See you in just a bit. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. It's Cleveland out on top at halftime. They are completely in control of the game, leading by a massive amount. Kenny, what's your viewpoint? They're going right to the rim, finishing every chance they get. The D was helpless trying to stop them and beating them inside. I love the relentlessness and the aggressive style. This is how you impose your will on another team. How about you, Shaq? What did you think about Utah? Their effort on the board has been horrendous. That's a good way to get blown out. Only way they could turn this thing around is to start winning the rebounding battle. Win the battle of possession. Otherwise, they're my favorite. Avocado toast. And after a very lopsided first half, we'll see if things play out a little more evenly here in the second. It's been one outstanding game from Donovan Mitchell. Definitely been challenging the defense here early on, not settling for anything outside. And yeah, you want these kind of nights where you can start to see those openings before they happen. And with the second half upon us, we'll find out if this game becomes the route that it's threatening to be. Mobley and Allen, the two big men inside. Ricky Rubio is out there with Rain Man, and it's a Coro in at the three spot. And that's the group for J.D. Bickerstaff as we begin the second half. Now, here's Mobley, following the shot by Rudy Gay. Rubio dishes to Allen. Here's Rain Man, angles covering, kicks it to a Coro. Krill's the three-pointer. A Coro's got 18 points. Guys, he's been a one-man air raid coming at them time and time again. Kind of like he's in his living room right now. He's found the comfort zone. Once Donovan he gets Mitchell. that, the defense knows they're in trouble. And what a ferocious finish. Once Mitchell gets some speed behind him, look out. Rubio, the pass to Okoro. Cleveland moving it around. Rubio, left side. Mobile. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. He's got six. And Rubio just waiting for the shooter to get open and then gets the assist. Here's Forrest, covered by Rubio. Forrest passes to Mitchell. Gobert against Rubio. And a rebound goes to the Cavaliers. 
and we're just about a minute and a half into the third quarter of basketball. To the paint, here's Mobley. It's good. And they're consistently Mobley. finding ways to get the ball inside and taking full advantage. Mitchell up top, 30 points in the game. Off target with the free throw line, Jay. That's one for their first four to start the second half. Well, the length of Jared Allen is such a huge asset. He's a shot blocker and a rim runner. And that's what people are looking for. More versatility and athleticism from the five spot. Well, great start. Check that box. They've made their first four shots, guys, and the offense looking very fluid right now. And foul on the shot, so he'll Ricky get a chance Rubio. at the line. That's his second personal foul. Ricky Rubio picks one up. And a throwback sort of game for Allen, bringing physicality and anchoring the defense. Yeah, and it's weird because the physicality you're talking about, Kevin, isn't so much in him showing brute strength. It might be just physically able to do the things above the rim and in a vertical space that impact the defensive end of the floor. Denzel Valentine, he's checked in for a Coro. A switcher also for Utah. Bogdanovich has checked in. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Thank you, Kevin. Rudy Gobert may get overlooked, but his coach understands what he means to the Utah Jazz. Quinn Snyder says his presence on the floor gives us a chance. He's our most important player as far as how he anchors our team. He's the foundation. And Kevin, the way they win games, that's saying something. He is a defensive player of the year multiple times. Phenomenal player. Thanks, D.A. And the shot goes in. Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell's got four points now in the quarter. And man, does Mitchell get buckets and from everywhere on the floor. A, a versatile offensive threat. And here's Valentine for three. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. Rubio's got six assists in the game. Third quarter of basketball here in just a little under three and a half minutes gone by. And it's good for two. Forrest has got 11. And with the ball in his hands, Mitchell attracts attention, then breaks down the defense with the pass. A nice shot by Mobley. Guys, he can't Mobley. miss. I swear, he was trying to miss that. He did not miss. That means he can't miss. Now, here's Mitchell. 32 points in the game. Now the pass to Forrest. On the wing, Ingles. And again, it's the Jazz Ingles. from deep. And just no excuse, guys, for leaving a shooter like him open beyond the arc. And here's Valentine for three. Another three for Cleveland. And what a great start to the second half. They've hit everything they've looked at thus far. The drive by Mitchell. Got a hand on it. And it's out of bounds. The Jazz able to retain possession here. Let's take another look at the staunch defense during that mobile one block. And a block like that sends a message. One that says we're not giving up this lead. Coming onto the floor for the Jazz. Hassan Whiteside. Eric Pascal. Jerry Butler. On defense, the Cavaliers. And it's Mitchell missing. Now, here's Valentine. He's covered by Bogdanovich. Count it. And it's now 22 points for Rain Man. And boy, he's really in a groove. Dominant performance last game. Same thing this time out. Seems to be nobody. Oh, oh, man. Man. Look at that. And how about the strength from Mitchell looking tough and determined on that aggressive take inside. And now another look at that mobile one block defensive performance. Yeah, quick thinking pays off big. What a block. And Whiteside sends it back. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by Whiteside. And the Cavaliers with some changes. Kevin Love's checked in for Jared Allen. Lowry Marketing comes in for Denzel Valentine. And it's Garland in for Ricky Rubio. Here's Rain Man. He's got 22. Yep, that one goes. Rain Man's got seven points for the quarter. And it's Butler with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Jams. 
At the conclusion of this game, they're off to Minnesota where they'll take on the Timberwolves. That'll be the second on the road in the midst of this long four-game road stand. Mitchell with it, picked up by Love, and it's slammed in by Whiteside. At seven feet tall, Whiteside is always a threat for the high percentage dunk. Driving the lane, it's good. Rain Man's got nine points here in the second half. Another good play. This is how they built the lead, calling on the right guys at the right time. Basketball IQ is something that gets talked about, but it's importance to a team showing up here, running plays that turn into scores. Here's Mobley. Here's Love. And it's Whiteside with the rebound. Jazz have gone 7 of 13 in the third quarter so far, just above 50%. Garland against Butler. Just five to shoot. Here's Whiteside. And it comes off the front of the rim. That's a shot he's got to hit. You don't get many looks better from that range. Markinen finds Love. Here's Rain Man. 26 points for him. No coverage that time. Garland's got himself on the board with three there. And perimeter scoring, I have to imagine it was a topic of discussion at halftime. Maybe trying to find a little bit more space and ball movement to get guys open at the three-point line. I love Bogdanovich's ability to put the team first. When he sees one of his guys open, he's a willing ball mover. It's good from long range. Garland's got six points. Having a lot of trouble stopping the three-point shot. Outside, Butler. Over Mobley. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. That's his first personal foul. Second team foul. And some stats here, guys. The scoring breakdown for the Cavaliers. What a tremendous showing from the three-pointer all through this game. And something else that's sticking out tonight is their assist total. High percentage of their baskets have been the product of good, crisp ball movement. A good sign for an offense. And the Cavaliers making a change here. Sexton's checked in. Royce O'Neal's checked in for Utah. So he picks up just one from the line that time. That's a two from Butler. No good on that one. Cavaliers go the other way with it. Passes it to Garland. Lays it up off the glass. Eight points for him. And that's just a tough shot from Garland taking the contact. Butler against Garland. Butler attacking. Trying to get open is Bogdanovich. And it's Butler missing. And here are the Cavaliers. Markinen kicks to Garland. The 11-footer, again, the Cavaliers score. I like seeing Love work that in between area. He's got a great understanding of when it is that he's going to have the room to fire. Out left to the wing. And Darius Garland picks up the foul. Garland. That's his first foul. Third team foul. Outside, Bogdanovich. Inside, here's Whiteside. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. That's his first. It's on Lowry Markinen. Well, sometimes the D has no choice Shooting but to Utah. foul Whiteside and try to make him earn it. First trip shots. to the free throw line for him in this one. Not the best statistic for him in terms of his performance at the line. Very low numbers. And, Greg, a lot of new head coaches stepping into this season. How does a first-year coach come in and, and, and win over a locker room? I mean, Kevin, that's a great question. And I think there's a, a combination of confidence and humility that one has to have. And I think, believe it or not, the most important trait, you got to be consistent. Your message cannot waver. It cannot fluctuate. That's one way that you will lose a locker room. Sexton against O'Neal. Just five on the clock. He kicks it to Butler. Shoots over Garland. Another miss by Utah. 
And well, he wants to shoot his way out of this cold spell, but the struggles continue. Yeah, he's got to move on, forget about this sequence here, and, and try to find a way to get on the board. That's their third straight make off an assist. Here's Bogdanovich. It's deflected. Garland against Bump. Here's Sullivan. That's good, and it's Garland with the assist. And that's 31 points for Rain Man. Down the stretch, he's been flat out awesome. He helped them get the lead, and now he's making sure they keep it. And it's out of bounds. The Jazz able to retain possession here. Okoro, he's checked in for Rain Man. And Utah also making a switch. Oni's checked in. So it's the Jazz now. Butler from outside. Knocks down the three ball. Butler. Butler's got four points now in the quarter. Yeah, kind of like playing in the rec league. Little to no defense on that possession. And the easiest three-pointer you can imagine. Garland dishes to Okoro. O'Neal against Love. It's Garland, top of the key. Bogdanovich grabs the miss. That's one he knows he should have drained. Oni passes to Butler. Two minutes. Down low. Here's Pascal. Two minutes. Pass to O'Neal. Back to Pascal. Outside Butler. And Utah another three. And not where he earns his money, that three-point shot. But he's a good shooter from that range if he's got space. And more and more, you're seeing Pascal act as an initiator. Could be viewed as a point forward at times. Yeah, he has a, an interesting game, GA, where offensively he can get his shot off. He's, he's springy off the floor. And he can cause some mismatches with a little bit of his quickness and that shooting ability. He's just adding to that skill set and getting more comfortable with the NBA game. Some nice passing by Cleveland here. Okoro passes to Sexton. And they come right back with their own three-pointer. Sexton's got nine points. And it's Butler with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Jags. Bogdanovich looking around. Back to Butler. Fires the three. That falls. Nice feed that time from Bogdanovich. Butler's got ten points in just the second half. Well, Cleveland shooting a mind-boggling 79% off the floor. Pass to Love from 11 feet away. It falls for his seventh bucket of the contest. He's seven for nine. Well, Love is awesome at reading the defense. When they're not up on him, he's going to let it rip. There's 31 seconds left in the third quarter. Really left alone that time. Bogdanovich, Bogdanovich has got three. his second bucket. Yeah, this looks like a pregame shoot around with all the threes they're allowing. Here's Markin in there, and that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. That's his first personal foul. Playing with aggression inside. At, at times, it's like Markin is daring the defense line, to foul. Cavalier. He's got free throw attempts number Markinen. four and five here. Taking two shots. That free throw missing. No doubt about the potential that Markinen has. He just needs to keep improving, especially on the defensive end. And the second free throw, good. We got 22 seconds left here in the third quarter. Gay can't hit. He's so good at getting to the rim. Maybe tries to get a little bit too cute with that one. I thought he laid straight up and in. And that one's good. Wow. Kevin Love can score from everywhere, and it's hard to figure out a way right now for this defense to slow him down. And here's Ingles outside, and he got that one up in time, but doesn't go in. And so it's Cleveland, able to put on a show for the agents. From the field, they have been outstanding, amazing shooting. That's what has them headed to a blowout. We'll return shortly.
And now we have a moment to uh, reveal our State Farm assist of the game. And the winner today, the big fella here with the sweetest of dimes. What a plus it is to have a post player who's got this ability to find. You know, anytime a guy's in the post and the teammates know he's unselfish, great player movement can create an opportunity just like that. And we reach the fourth quarter in a game that may be already out of hand. Cavaliers shooting an absolutely astounding 80% from the field. Everything is falling. And Utah looking at who they've got to start the fourth quarter. We got Joe Ingles and Atessa Buque in at the center position. Yeah, when you give up these second chance opportunities, I don't know what you expect. Kevin Love is going to find a way to get in there and make something good happen. Ingles, the bounce pass. Here's Forrest. And right on through for another basket. He's got five made on five of nine shooting. Well, that's how you draw it up right there. A screen to shed the defense. A quick move to the bucket. And you get the lay-in. Not a lot of resistance on the inside. And they're taking full advantage. In the NBA dress code introduced back in 2005. Now, player attire straying a bit from business casual. Uh, does that bother you, Greg? You know, it doesn't bother me because that's where we are as a society. But, man, I can tell you, when I first came in the league, you get fined if you didn't wear dress socks with your suit. So we have come a long way in terms of the evolution of fashion. And you know what? I'm not one for stopping progress. The Cavaliers have gone two or three from the field to get the fourth quarter start. Played outside. Now the dish to Valentine. The shot's good on the assist by Wade. Valentine's got six in the quarter. He's just stretching him out. The defense has got to do a better job of staying attached to him. I'm not sure what the defense collectively was thinking there. you got to know where he is at all times. Well, any possession that ends in a shot from that range after a good player and ball movement, that's a good one. Osmond, and it's in there. I'm sorry, that's poor defense down low again. It's been a mismatch thus far in the paint. And Brent, small forward Jetty Osmond out of Turkey. A pretty versatile game. Yeah, he does a little bit of everything the out there. And you wonder, with, with Jetty just being in the environment the of the teams that he's been on in the past few years, a lot of losing going on. Is that impacting his confidence? And would more be opened up if he had a different opportunity? Who's to say? I know when he plays on that Turkish team, you see a different, determined Jetty Osman. And there's the pass to Forrest. Here's Brantley. Passes to Forrest. Lock at six. As Ibuki tried to break free. And Forrest gets it to go. Forrest has got ten points in just the second half. And now that we've gotten a taste of it, Greg, what do you think of the play-in tournament? I, I love it. I mean, it definitely has some pros and cons. And you want to keep as many teams as possible engaged down the stretch, but it's a long season, and for some teams, it just got a little bit long. Well, he's been doing it all night. Why not go back to it? Yeah, he's feeling it. Keep feeding him until he misses. Here's Forrest. Wade is covering. He was all alone on that one. And I like the back and forth here, showing confidence from range. It seems like they're going to find out who can make the deepest threes. Right now, it's a shootout. Here's the three. Another three for Cleveland. And really, as the three-pointers keep dropping, you get the sense that the frustration is mounting for the defense. Now, here's Ingles. Now the feed to Ezebuki. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. First personal foul. And they came out of the locker room after halftime with a much more physical approach than what we saw in that first half. At the line for two. He misses the free throw. The Jazz making a switch here. Butler's checked in.
That one is no good. And Brent, you played for the Spurs who pioneered player rest. More and more teams have followed that suit over the season. Calling it load management, even risking fines. Any concern with the way things are done? Well, I understand the, the fans' complaint, you know, to think about being a 10-year-old boy or girl and, and LeBron James is coming to your city and it's a load management day and he's not playing. And so the league understands it. It understands it from its broadcast partners and the way that they want the star players to be involved in, in every game that they play. And they've tried to adjust the schedule and moved it around a little bit, doing away with back-to-backs. I, I think it'll be a constant battle. Uh, but the organizations are investing in these players and health is their number one issue. They want them to play as many games for as long as they can at an elite level. So we'll see how it goes in, in the next couple of years. And another three for Cleveland. This quarter belongs to him. And that's how you do it when you're out in front. Don't play it safe. Keep that momentum going. Well, their pass to Brantley. Back to Butler. To halt the run. No good on the shot. And Cleveland will come the other way. To the middle. Deflects the pass. Here's Osman. Drops in the layup for two. Well-rounded effort, and, and they show no signs of letting up. Coaching staff probably most proud of the effort of this team on both ends of the floor here tonight. Here's Brantley. And the Cavaliers pushing it up now. Wade against Azubuki. Wade misses. And so it's Ingles with it. He brings it up for Utah. Pass to Brantley. Now Cleveland moving it up. Windler with the bucket. Windler's got five points in the quarter. Great effort and gets in a little razzle-dazzle at the end of that one. Yeah, why not? Show a little creativity, get inside, move that ball around, just make sure you score. And it's Brantley missing. And they just can't find a way to end this thing. Nothing falling right now. Frustration seems to be mounting here, and you can see not just in their faces, but right now in their quick and hurried shot selection. Now, Ingles. Azubuki with the ball. Kicks it to O'Neal. And here is Ingles. Cranes the three-pointer. Can't talk enough three about points. the subtleties in that setup right there. The assist really the key to that entire sequence. Rubio outside. Pass to Windler. Some nice passing by Cleveland here. Here's Osman. And Cleveland again with the bucket. They ran that play exactly as it was drawn up. Nice job. For Utah, they've gone 5 of 12 from the field, entering the fourth quarter. O'Neal kicks to Butler. And Spurs great Tim Duncan recently inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And you played with him, Brent, for a handful of seasons. You won a couple rings. Any reflections? Well, Tim was such a tremendous teammate and so welcoming to, to every player that uh, he came across that walked into a Spurs locker room with the inherent trust he had from Coach Popovich that they were going to invite players that were going to come in and be about the right things. I just remember my first time visiting San Antonio, signing as a free agent, and the first person that I saw in the summer in the gym by himself shooting bank shots on the practice floor was one Tim Duncan. What a leader and what an all-time great. Now, here's Ingles. Inside, Brantley. And a missed layup. Here's Valentine to the inside. Rebound by Azubuki. Azubuki's got rebound number five here tonight. There's O'Neal with the three. The shot's good on the assist by Butler. Butler's got his fifth assist in this one. Rubio against Butler. And here's Valentine for three. He just cannot miss. Eight up, eight in. Flawless. 
both teams running perimeter-oriented plays that are working. Well, both of them looking towards the three-point line, and I like to see that, especially when the results are made buckets. Cutler on the wing. Clock at four. Rubio with the rebound. Rubio's got his fourth rebound in this one. And the shots just continue to say no in terms of falling. Down low, here's Butler. Well time pass, Butler. and he goes straight to That's the bucket it. for the layup. And 12 points here for Jared Butler. And, and after a scoreless first half, you're starting to see signs of life here in the second. Back to Valentine. Here's Windler. Another three for Cleveland. Well, and this has been their strategy throughout the fourth period. We'll see how it pans out. It's one thing to have teams shoot a bunch of threes, but with this team being that hot defensively, you got to chase them away from anywhere near that line. Butler passes to Ingles. Three-pointer. The Cavaliers pull it in. Not quite enough defense that time around. Just lucky he was off. The pass to Osman. Here's Windler. And another three for Cleveland. Just a humongous fourth quarter for him, especially from long range. Just in a groove now, and that tray has been deadly. Ingles passes to Brantley. It's deflected. Here's Azubuki. Banked in off the glass. Two minutes. Yudoka Azubuki. They are in complete control. This is the ultimate definition of the zone. Everything they've done has worked. Rubio with a wide open look. And another three for Cleveland. Ricky Rubio. Get the feet set. Ricky Rubio can't get in the zone from the three-point line. Here's Brantley. 139 left in the fourth quarter. As Abuki dishes to Butler. Shoots over Rubio. Misses off the left iron. The Cavaliers on offense. They're on a 16-7 run. And one team one. is just completely outclassing the other tonight. Spirited performance. And it really ignited what is turning out to be a monster win here for the Cavaliers. As one-sided as it gets today, you know, there were some dominant moments in there about every facet of this game for that team. Yeah, I mean, Kevin, it's hard to think of what didn't go right for them. Uh, game planning by the coaches, execution by the players, everything was just on target. And for the year now, they'll be tallying their 16th win. And so they win their first game against this squad. It's a two-game season series, and they'll be going for the sweep the next time they face off. And you know, looking back at all the contributions tonight, it was a really phenomenal all-around game for Rain Man. Serving up feeds all night long. He was the best teammate that they had on the floor. How about the range on that jump shot? I love seeing this guy when he's in form. To the paint. Here's Pascal. The shot's good on the assist by Butler. Well, those interior passes can be dangerous sometimes, but if the timing is good and you execute it there, you can get easy hoops. Passes it to Windler. Osman kicks to Sexton. And another three for Cleveland. Making every effort to put this game on ice. Loved it. The guys are staying aggressive late in this ball game, just not wanting to let go of the rope. And the basket Pascal. by Pascal. I do so enjoy Jared watching Butler. a bounce pass executed that perfectly. And he drives in. Valentine. It's blocked. Oni passes to Pascal. The Jazz working the ball around now. And in terms of size, not your typical center, but man, he plays as big as any of them thanks to that terrific leaping ball. Uh, impressive job by the players, coaches, and don't discount the impact of these fans. Awesome to see their output tonight trying to urge their team on, and that can always help. That, that home advantage of home fans getting you going fully on display here. Here's Sexton. Pass to Windler. 
Now Sexton. Let's the free fly. Got it. Well, this is kind of fun. Sexton coming back and returning the favor. And so it's Cleveland taking care of business in this. This game may not have been the most exciting we've ever seen, but you have to appreciate just what a clinical performance they put on. I know their fans appreciated it, and we saw at times just stretches of excellent defense. Potency from an offensive standpoint as well. They, they were pretty much dominant. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks a lot, Ricky. You've played in a lot of big games, but what does it mean to you to make a big contribution tonight? Yeah, it means something. It means that we win. But, I mean, of course, I'm happy. But the most important thing is that we play as a team. We, we did it today, and we make shots. Great performance all around, Ricky. Thanks for your time. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David. Great job. Thanks so much. And that'll do it, folks. For Greg Anthony, Brett Berry, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA, presented by 2K Sports. And we'll see you next time.